All right, so I made some updates to my cord rig from a few days ago when I uploaded the previous video. And if you remember, or if you watched that one, um, that one was basically just, uh, well, I won't go over the whole thing, but uh, a wire curve warp deformer on a NURBS curve and uh, these joints skinning the curve. Um, and that was pretty much all there was to it. I mean, uh, I didn't go over this in the video, but what I would have eventually done is added some uh, NURBS curves to act as controls for these, that these would be parented to, um, so that I'm animating on those rather than directly on the joints. But then, somebody asked me, uh, what if I wanted to have some other piece of geometry uh, that was following along the cord, such as an uh, Apple headphone, for example, um, and I didn't want that object to deform, but I wanted it to follow along with the rest of the rig. Well, I, at first I was a little stumped, um, but then I discovered a solution, which uh, it's not 100% perfect, but it's pretty cool uh, way that I have this set up. And so as you can see here, um, I have a little cube to represent something like the control panel on a Apple headphone or, or something else like that. Um, and that is currently following along with this uh, cord. And it looks pretty smooth and it's not deforming. In fact, it can't even deform because it doesn't have enough geometry to. Um, so, how did I do this? Well, it took a little bit of finagling and a lot of constraints, but um, it's not too, too crazy. Um, so what I have here, if I look over in the right, I just kind of blasted through this so nothing's really named the way it should be, but essentially there's just this one joint floating here, and um, this mesh is just skinned to that one joint. And this joint um, has both a parent constraint, or sorry, a point constraint, and an orient constraint, and it's point and orient constrained to both of these joints simultaneously above it and below it. And these were the two joints that were on my rig in the first place. The third one um, I added in for this update. And um, so if I click on this joint, you can see over here that um, I have it weighted at 0.5 per, uh, value between both of those joints on either side of it. Now, um, that wasn't enough to make this work. Uh, and what I needed to have happen uh, was some way for this to kind of be, you know, pointing in the right direction. Um, and basically what I did for that is I thought, well, I need an aim constraint. I need this to be aiming towards this one, but also aiming towards this one. The problem was that you can't apply two different aim constraints uh, on the same object, you can basically only have one aim constraint. Um, and I tried a few different things, and what I ended up doing was creating this group. Both of these are groups here. And inside that group is the joint and a locator. And the locator and the joint are not connected to each other, per se, uh, until I add a point constraint on the locator so the point constraint is making it so that um, this locator follows the movement of this joint. And then I have on the aim constraint, I have a, or sorry, on the joint, I have an aim constraint that is aiming at the locator of the opposite one. So basically what's happening is that anytime this locator moves, or anytime this joint moves, the locator also moves, and whenever the locator moves, it brings, it aim, or rather aims um, the joint up here, or vice versa, towards it. The only problem was that, um, as you can see, when I just move the locator by itself, uh, it doesn't really look the way it's supposed to. However, I discovered that if both the joint and the locator move simultaneously, then the problem is fixed. And then I just put them all in a group and attach them to the nerves curve. So let me go through in the old version and set this up real quick.
Again, I don't know if this is the uh, absolute best way of making this work, but aim constraints are uh, very useful. Um, and uh, shout out to famed a game animator Richard Lico for uh, kind of giving the idea for that um, in his most recent video where he uh, describes some of the technique techniques used to animate his game Moss. So I'll put a link to that in the description. Although, just FYI, um, if you're not kind of in the know about uh, a lot of animation stuff in terms of setting up um, space, world space versus local space and all that sort of stuff, uh, it might not make any sense to you. But uh, not that I'm that at that level either, but uh, he gave me some ideas for how to make this work. Uh, all right, so that's it for this video, and I hope that uh, it makes sense to everybody. Good luck.